Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Geek Wave. This is the low budget show. It's the show so low it has no budget. Only when we release two blockbusters back to back that gross over five hundred million independently of each other will our quota go up, and we'll be able to make big boy bucks for our podcast, which is the topic of today's episode. This is one I've been thinking about for a while and a topic that means a lot to me just because it lets me talk about Hollywood in a way I don't usually talk about Hollywood, and that's really exciting. We'll get into that right away to talk about the new crop of movie stars and if I do genuinely think they are what you would call a movie star. Because I'll be honest, I made a list of some people that have great contention to potentially be movie stars, but I have yet to be convinced that some of them are movie stars. That's just where we are in terms of life. But we have a couple of news pieces to talk about before we get into that. More importantly, we have a couple of trailers to talk about and then like some weird projects that are being made. So let's get into it, starting with our first piece of news, my dear listener, which is a new Popeye the Sailor movie, which is supposedly a live action remake of Popeye. Now, we made a Popeye movie little while ago in the 1980s, led by Robin Williams. It was an Altman flick. It was weird. Well, we're trying it again. God forbid Tartakovsky gets to do his really nice-looking cartoon animated version of Popeye. Who do you even get to play Popeye in live action these days? Because the Altman one leaned so heavily into, like, this is the cartoon come to life, we're gonna make him look weird. I don't know if, like, people today give a shit about trying to do this. I don't know. Maybe they do. It's very weird. I'm for it, though. Like, if we want to attempt to do a new Popeye, why not? Well, the worst thing that happens is we make a stupid movie that nobody remembers in 10 years. And that is fine by me. <laughs> so, sure. We have a screenwriter attached to work on the script. It is from Michael Calio who worked on things like Sexy Beast, The Family, and The Sopranos. This is the, yeah, you get it. So that's a largely, and I do say largely, crime-based, which I guess he is like a hero of the seas, or just like the wharf, you know? Maybe we should do an episode talking about like old Popeye cartoons. That could be kind of fun, hey? I think I'm going to do that at some point. Because this character is kind of interesting, so sure, let's, uh, I honestly can't think of, like, somebody today I'd get to play Popeye. My mind went to Paul Giamatti, but he might be, like, too old? How old's Popeye supposed to be? I don't know. But I, why not? If we could do another Popeye, let's do it. Who's, who's the modern-day Williams that could do it? I guess Gosling? Would you say Gosling could do it? Yeah, that'd be weird. Whatever. There you go, a Popeye movie. And let's move over to our next piece of news, which is really stupid. And that is that a Sims. Remember the video game The Sims? There is a movie in the works from Margot Robbie's production company, Lucky Chap, with director Kate Heron attached. Kate Heron worked on episodes of Loki and Margot Robbie trying to do the magic of Barbie again with The Sims. Here's, like, I heard this news, and I'm like, okay, that is very interesting when you connect it to, like, Barbie, because you could essentially do the same thing where, like, a Sims wakes up and realizes they're in a virtual reality. It's kind of the plot to Don't Worry, Darling. If we really want to sit here and think about it, it's kind of the same movie as Don't Worry, Darling. Sure. I don't know. This just doesn't interest me. I feel like that's the wrong lesson to take from the success of Barbie. But then again, Margot Robbie is probably aware of those things, and she's just producing this. I don't know if it says she's looking to star in it, but that's that's okay. I think if you were to do something more outlandish, what if like somebody goes to the Sims, like somebody realizes they're in like a Sims World Truman Show style? And, like, they just, like, realize they can't speak the same language as everybody. And this random shit is happening. And, like, the Grim Reaper shows up. You could do something fun with that concept. I just can't imagine a world where we do. But then again, 
Barbie did something more interesting than I ever expected. But that also might be Bombach and Gerwig taking a lot of swings at the script. If they're not doing it, Kate Heron has yet to sell me on this stuff. But then again, I do like Kate Heron's direction, her Loki episodes, and I want to see her do something interesting. So I'm mixed on this overall. It could be a retread of Barbie, or it could be chaotic good. I don't know. But we'll see. I'm not convinced it's going to be anything. Uh, but we'll find out, won't we? So I guess this is in collaboration with Vertigo Entertainment and Electronic Arts, which of course it is. They publish the game. So EA slowly going to start doing movies. This is the other thing we could talk about too. Video games are the new comic books. You know, we have adaptations there. Fallout's coming out very soon. You know, Halo just wrapped up. These are the things that people want to see. So The Sims, sure, let's do it. But God forbid I get my animated Star Fox movie. Okay, we got a couple trailers to talk about, people. And I watched them all. And uh, I don't really have much thoughts on any of the trailers. So let's get through that pretty darn quick. First trailer let's talk about is the trailer for Star Wars The Acolyte, which is the one Leslie Headland's been working on for a while, scheduled to drop June 4th of this year. This trailer looks fine. I am uh, someone who read the... A High Republic era of stuff. A little behind on my reading of The High Republic. That's that's just going to happen. So I'm not, like, caught up on everything. I know this is, like, kind of after the events of stuff. It's, like, I don't know how many years before the events of The Phantom Menace or whatever. It doesn't really matter. I think it looks fine. You got actors in there that are interesting. Carrie Ann Moss, so that's cool. And I just want an interesting Star Wars piece that isn't just the same three characters in animation and live action in The Mandalorian appearing all over the place. So just doing something different with Star Wars is genuinely exciting to me. It makes me smile. For some reason, it is the most disliked Star Wars trailer of all time or some shit. And the grifters who just talk shit about, you know, stupid Star Wars things, they just... Ugh, it's... It's hard to get excited about Star Wars, especially because people just keep talking about it in negative ways. But I don't hate what we're looking at. It has the same problems of using like the technology that we use today. They said they didn't use the volume, but I call bullshit on that. You just didn't do it. I don't know. Fuck, man. It just... It's tiring how bland so much of this stuff looks. Having just did our episode talking about Roadhouse... I'm just like, that actually has visual style. I wish people care to try, but I also know Disney won't. I have faith in Headland to do something cool, so I, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. But I also don't feel convinced that Disney's going to seriously do something where the Sith take over. Because that poster, that poster, and I do want to talk about this, the poster that the Acolyte showed, where it's like the bloody lightsaber, that is invocative of the poster they released for Moon Knight, where it's the bloody crescent moon and the fist that's covered in blood. And then that show has no blood and cuts away from the action sequences. So I do not want to be burned again by the Acolyte for that. But I feel like it could happen. I don't know. I really hope that's not the case, but I've been burned before. We got a trailer for Alien Romulus, which is like the new Alien movie, Fady Alvarez. Uh, yeah, it, it looks like Alien if we shot it with a digital camera. I don't really got anything to say. We have Kaylee Spaney in here. She's like the modern, you know, Ripley. So that's cool. It, I wish I was more excited, if I'm being honest. Like, I was really pumped for more Alien, but... I'm just like, yeah, this hopefully is good. Hopefully it's, like, scary. It's, like, set between the two movies or whatever. And I want this to work so bad. I don't know if it's going to work. That really sucks. I hate that feeling. Where you're so jazzed for something and you're like, well, this could actually fall apart pretty damn easy. That's happening a lot these days. <laughs> oh, man. So there you go. More alien. There's the alien-looking stuff. There's alien-looking creatures, practical effects and shit. That's kind of cool. Speaking of practical effects, that takes us over to the last trailer we're going to talk about, which is for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the new Beetlejuice movie, the sequel that's been long awaited or whatever, 35 years in the making or whatever. Looks okay, yay. 
it was a teaser trailer. Nothing really happened. But I'm glad it exists because God forbid, right? <sighs> I'm looking forward to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, you know, relatively. I don't love the first movie. It's probably lower on my scale of Tim Burton movies I like. I find it to be very insufferable, but Tim Burton has also made a lot of insufferable movies, and I'm sure we'll talk about it closer to the time. But that, I, I just, I don't know. Lydia is back, and she's like, has a kid or something. Jenna Ortega is in it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But whatever, practical effects in that movie is what they're like boasting, but we'll find out if that's actually true. All right, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, let's talk about the modern movie star. Here's a fun topic that has been on my mind a lot these days. You know, we're in a very weird era of movies, and we're kind of coming out of, like, this lull of the 2010s and the pandemic era, where suddenly we're seeing a resurgence of people wanting to see, like, star-driven films. And I cite a couple recent ones, like Wonka, Dune Part 2, Anyone But You, those types of movies where there are actors that are selling it, you're here to see the actors. Now, everyone knows Wonka, everyone is familiar with Dune, but you're here largely for the actors, because we don't genuinely get that that much anymore, which I know people have argued with, I know people have argued about this, okay? This is something a lot of people have debated, and more prolific and important people than myself have talked about it, but I thought we could like, look at a couple of examples of people who could reach the level of being a movie star, like, becoming somebody who can, one, spearhead an independent film, get it made for themselves, have them produce it and star in it, and have it be an entirely original concept that people come to see. So I have a list of a couple names I want to go through, but before we get there, I do want to clarify a couple of things and a couple of reasons I took certain people off the list. Number one, there are a couple names on here that are people from superhero franchise stuff, but largely I didn't want to choose people that were solely about a franchise. So I, Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pratt, they have yet to convince me that they themselves are selling a movie. They are selling a character, the character is what is selling the movie, you could argue that those movies did good because the actors are good in them, but they are not solely independently selling like their passion projects. When was the last Chris Evans movie in a theater? I'll give you that. I, was it Knives Out? Was it Knives Out that he was starred in? You know, not that he did a voice for, because I think Lightyear was in cinemas or something, right? It's been a while. I also didn't want to choose actors who are famous on streaming. You could make the argument that somebody like Millie Bobby Brown could become a movie star, but all of the movies that she makes, like Damsel, Enola Holmes, they go straight to streaming. That's not a movie star. That's not something that's getting butts in seats. Alan Richson is somebody that could, but he is on television. Alan Richson is doing things like Reacher on television, but if he were to lead a big movie... Not Ordinary Angels, but something bigger? He could potentially become a movie star. So there's a couple of those people that I kept off the list because I'm like, they either haven't had the chance or they're doing stuff for streaming, and streaming doesn't make you a movie star. I also didn't want to put on, like, famous people from, like, TikTok and stuff. Look, I'm sure if Addison Ray like, led a bigger movie than Eli Roth's Thanksgiving, people would be interested but she's not a movie star. The appeal of a TikTok star and a content creator is not the same appeal as a movie star. A movie star is somebody your parents are interested in seeing on screen too. No parent gives a shit about the D'Amelios or Allison Ray or Addison, whatever the fuck. I don't even know what the modern ones are like for those. Now, this is solely for movies. 
I do think in recent times we've seen like the music star kind of like resurface in different ways. You have people like Olivia Rodrigo, you have people like Taylor Swift and Billie Eilish who are kind of like coming up into a new stardom of themselves. You have Mr. Beast who is a prolific content creator in himself, but he's not going to get you to watch a movie. Not yet at least, not until he takes over Hollywood. So this was a there's very specific parameters I was looking for. I didn't want to find too many people who were like over 40. I don't have any on my list that are over 40. Like I could I could make the argument that like today in like this environment Ryan Gosling is the closest we have to a 40-year-old ranged movie star selling you on a movie. That all depends to me personally for how the fall guy does because the last couple of times we had him lead a big movie like The Nice Guys or Blade Runner 2047, 2049, I forget what, you know what I mean. It hasn't worked out for him. They've never been financial hits. And that's the other thing. They have to be financial hits on a relative scale. So I didn't want any comic book actors. There's a couple. I did not put the cast of Superman Legacy, or just Superman now, I guess, on this list. So Dave and Corrin Sweat, Rachel Brosnahan, they are not movie stars yet. So far, those two are going to be selling that movie because it is Superman and Lois Lane. Nicholas Holt, another one who is more character actor, which is also not the thing I'm looking for. Not a character actor. That's the other thing. So there's very specific parameters. Now, Jenna Ortega, who we talked about a little bit in the Beetlejuice segment, she could potentially, potentially be a movie star. But the projects that she has worked on thus far have been very specific in tone. Now, Scream movies, and she did that weird one with like Martin Short or something. Not Martin Short, the other Martin Freeman where they like hook up because she's like a college student or something. Those are not big movies that are going to bring everybody in. So if we were to include like modern scream queens, like people who are famous for being scream queens, Melissa Barrera, I could argue goes on this list. Catherine Newton could go on this list and Jenna Ortega briefly could go on this list. But because horror movies are very specific, they're not going to be for everybody. I didn't put them on this list. Nobody from Riverdale or Stranger Things or any of those types of stuff where you're like, there's a huge audience for this young actor, but nobody's really coming out to see them. I didn't put on any of like the Nepo bait, like the Nepo babies, like Cooper Hoffman or James Gandolfini's son. What's his name? I forget what his name is. Like these types of people that could potentially do something like that. I also didn't want to choose anybody who we've given a shot to become a movie star to. So, Taron Edgerton is not on the list, neither is somebody like Henry Golding, who we tried to make stuff, but it was in a pandemic, so it really fucked up his career. Chris Pine, I don't think is a movie star, and I don't think someone like those other people. So there's like, remember that new movie coming out, like, SNL 1975, Gabriel LaBelle, Rachel Sennett, like that generation, that's not movie star yet. We could come back to this list maybe in a couple of years, see how these people did, and then from there pick like the new generation of movie stars. But as it stands, I think I got a couple of choices that could potentially be movie stars. None of those people, no Nepo babies, none of that stuff. Maya Hawk could, but I don't think she is. Iowe Debery also isn't. She could be, but she's also doing a lot of TV. And TV... I'm not saying TV kills the movie star like what Clooney became, but you have to be somebody that leads a movie where people go to the movie for you. So I have a list, I think of like 11 or 10 choices that I want to talk about. These people that could potentially do it. I don't think all of them are going to succeed. There's a couple of specific names on here I don't think will succeed at becoming a movie star. But when I think movie star... You have to think they are selling the movie no matter what. They are a huge deal. They bring in mass appeal for everybody. And they have to represent something larger than themselves. Not not like controversy free, but there's just something bigger about them that is drawing in all types of crowds to want to see their movies. And that's something that's very interesting to explore. Now, talking about this too, I should note 
we are seeing like the last gasp of like the previous generation of movie stars still getting things made. Tom Cruise is still getting stuff made. Leonardo DiCaprio is still getting stuff made. Dwayne Johnson, to some extent. A lot of them have kind of like moved into other areas, like a Denzel Washington or a Tom Hanks have kind of like phased out of that zone of being a movie star to being more independent. I know there was like that article that came out very recently where people were talking about like the top movie stars and who people want, who people pay to go see in a movie. And I just, I, I think the thing is, they're all old. They're all older people. If you just type it in to Google, Tom Cruise, Leonardo DiCaprio, RDJ, Will Smith, Harrison Ford, Samuel L. Jackson, Denzel Washington, Brad Pitt, Tom Hanks, Johnny Depp, Sandra Bullock, Hugh Jackman, Bradley Cooper, Robert De Niro, Matt Damon, Morgan Freeman, Dwayne Johnson, Bruce Willis, Christian Bale, Mel Gibson, Meryl Streep, Jack Nicholson, Keanu Reeves, Al Pacino, Natalie Portman, Julia Roberts. They're all over 40. All those names are over 40. So <laughs> that's not looking good, <laughs> you know? That's not looking good. Ugh. We need to make new movie stars. And we're slowly seeing that era return. So I devised a list of people I think could become the new movie stars, the people who are going to suddenly be the next generation. Now, maybe we could compare these people to like who they could potentially like emulate as a movie star. I'm not sure, but I, it's weird because some of these people haven't even been like the biggest movies of all time, but also Avengers Endgame has not made any movie stars. And that's another thing. I didn't put people like Haley Steinfeld on this list because I don't think she's been there yet. Amon Vellani is not a movie star. Brie Larson is not a movie star. Unfortunately, I'd love to put Brie Larson on this list. She's not a movie star. Now, two other things I want to talk about before we get into this list. The first one, composing this list, I did realize that this was a very white-focused group. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of white people. I have like two names for actresses who are not Caucasian. But that's just because we don't really see these other people get big chances, which really sucks. The other thing is, this is primarily for a Hollywood setting, okay? I know elsewhere in the world, you know, there's a bunch of Bollywood films and Japanese films, all that stuff. That is... Th that's its own thing and there's its own success in there where people can see growth so this is primarily for hollywood i have one choice that's over the age of 40 i want to bring up and then i have two other choices that i think are movie stars right now so three that are movie stars and another list of some who could potentially become movie stars so the first one i want to talk about is Pedro Pascal. I do think he is a movie star in some essence, though he hasn't led a lot of films yet. His rise does come from television and his success is seen there. But Pedro has kind of had that career where he's got the universal love. He has been in a bunch of stuff people like. He has been in movies. You know, he has been in The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. He's been in the Kingsman stuff. He's going to be leading Fantastic Four. He will be in Gladiator 2. And I think he's a prime example, like somebody finding success later in life who is going to become a figurehead of this generation. Being on things like Game of Thrones, The Mandalorian, Narcos, The Last of Us, those elevate you to a status already for the public. But now we're going to see him, his career take off into a new direction. So I, I think Pedro is technically a movie star if he hasn't had the star-driven movie made for him yet. So he's my first one. I have two others who I do think are bona fide movie stars at this point. Number one, Margot Robbie. She is 33. She has made a billion-dollar movie. And she is producing a lot of her own stuff, too. We talked about in the first half of this video. She's producing a Sims movie. She's got Lucky Chap set up. She has 
proven herself to be able to do these things. She's still relatively young. She has made great career choices. She is very pretty, so that definitely helps her out. But she has gotten a lot of stuff made solely because it is her. She's one of the few people to kind of like escape the draws of being in like DC movies. She has worked with some auteur directors, people who have given her a lot of chances. She has worked with like Greg Gillespie and Martin Scorsese and Damien Chazelle. And she has made things that are interesting. She has worked very hard to get to this position. And I do think it works. Barbie is very successful for a lot of reasons. Margot is one of them. Margot is one of them. And then you see the career she's carved out for herself. She did Harley Quinn successfully. She did not get trapped in that role. She did Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Babylon, where she plays like a classic era of movie star, which is very cool to see. And she just does some other random stuff. Like she has really found her niche she's had a couple of bombs but every movie star does like babylon didn't do too good amsterdam didn't do too good but then she'll randomly show up in something like asteroid city and she'll just crush it she'll do something with will smith where she can hold her own against will smith in focus or i tanya which i tanya solely rests on her shoulders and it becomes something very interesting to see and she just excels at that so I put Margot Robbie on the list of somebody who has ascended to movie star. Whatever she does next, whether she makes that like Oceans 1 or whatever the hell she's making with Ryan Gosling, that is going to bring her to another ascension. Now the second person I think reaches this level only happened very recently. That is Timothy Chalamet, who is very young. He's a young guy, but he has reached that. He has reached the heights of like a Johnny Depp in the 90s level where he's a very specific vibe. He's got a weird energy. His dating history is very prominent and people talk about it. And he had two back-to-back -back hits. Wonka made a lot of freaking money. Dune Part 2 made a lot of freaking money. Two very different movies that have shown people will come out to see this guy. He's made his art house projects currently as well. He's doing a Bob Dylan movie right now, which is going to garner him more support. That Bob Dylan movie is going to introduce a whole new generation of young people to Bob Dylan solely because of Chalamet. So that brings him to a new level. Both Wonka and Dune have, have passed 500 million worldwide. That's incredible. So he has become the bona fide guy now. His quota just went up. If you see some recent reports, he just got a huge pay raise for whatever he stars in, which is earned. Very earned. Very earned. So those two, I think, are the this generation's movie stars. They are the ones who have made it in the movie star bubble currently. We have a couple of other choices that I think could do similar work. First one I want to talk about is Zendaya. Zendaya could potentially become a movie star. To me, one of the defining factors is going to be how well Challengers plays when that comes out this month. If that does well, if there is success in that and people are praising her in that movie, we could see her suddenly getting these bigger roles doing these other things, becoming like a Thandie Newton, Halle Berry type where people are paying to see this woman do this thing that she does well. Currently, I don't think she's a movie star. She's famous for a whole generation because of Euphoria and Spider-Man, but is MJ the character that defines her? I don't think so. There's potential. Dune definitely helps that. Now, I've said I don't think she's the strongest part of Dune, and I think she is very interesting in that movie. But stepping away from that just on like a small scale to see like what her next projects could be, Challengers will make or break what happens with her career. And I also I say this too, none of this really matters. Like this is, if these people don't want to be like the top echelons, they don't have to be. But I think it's very interesting to see where their careers are headed. Like Zendaya, we're about to see what could become of her. That's pretty interesting. 
And this one I also find very fascinating. It is Sydney Sweeney. I bring this up solely because her movie, Anyone But You, which does rest on her shoulders and Glenn Powell's shoulders, we'll get to him in a minute here. It is about the two of them having chemistry, making a romantic comedy. Now, Anyone But You made like $200 million worldwide on like a $10 million budget. She went to star in Madam Web immediately after. Her new movie, Immaculate, is currently in cinemas. She produced that. She has set up a partnership with Sony to produce movies. She's working on a Barbarella movie. There is a huge chance... A very huge chance that in the next couple of years, we are going to see Sydney Sweeney as one of the top talents out there. She is she could ascend quicker than I think Zendaya could and reach Margot Robbie levels because she's producing her own stuff. She has worked in like the genres that people say you have to when you start out your career. And now that you have your bona fides in, you can go make the passion projects like Immaculate, which is doing pretty good numbers considering the low scale budget of that movie. Now, the thing with Sydney Sweeney, I don't want this to sound like a criticism. I do like the majority of the stuff she's done. She is not the greatest actress. Now, I have said this before. I'll say it again here. Her producing credits are more interesting than her acting credits. Like the things she's like, I'm going to attach my name to this and help create it with my production company. That's really cool. That's better than some of the stuff she's done. So she she is going to ascend. She's 100% going to ascend. She's beautiful. She represents like a very specific thing. I would say like a Meg Ryan energy, kind of like a Julia Roberts where you have like this fantastic beauty who can play like the high society or the low society if only she lost the little afflictions in her voice where it kind of sounds like a valley girl i think she could hit some really cool notes but it is very very hard to get anyone but you to the level it did and she is the co-star of that so she's definitely a part of it but the other person in that movie is a man called Glenn Powell. Now, Glenn Powell, to me, has the clearest career path to become this generation's Cruz or Kilmer or Clooney or hell, even Gosling. He's in his 30s. He's charming. He's very funny on social media. Very, very aware. Very fucking aware of of himself and what he can do maybe he doesn't love that but he is very capable of understanding who he is he has starred in a bunch of movies he is the modern day foil in top gun maverick which is a great place to show you that he has worked with like the current crop of movie stars who are aging out of the roles he is going to be leading or one of the leads in the upcoming Twisters movie, which had another huge crop of people I think could potentially become movie stars. You know, like Daisy Edgar Jones, if she plays her cards right, could end up on that same scale. You could see things happening for Brandon Peria. He could definitely get over there too. And on that note as well, I think someone like Paul Mescal is going to be more like a character actor. Same with like Barry Keoghan, same with like Kiki Palmer and that kind of stuff. So I don't really put them as like movie star level yet. But, you know, you could make the ascension for Daniel Kaluuya, but he's doing a lot of weird genre stuff. So I just don't think it's there yet. But, but Powell, Powell, anyone but you, he showed you he can do the rom-com, which we already knew before that. He's one of the few guys who was doing rom-coms when they weren't popular. They weren't making a lot of money. He did the Linklater movie, which was Everybody Wants Some, where he played like the asshole. See, he had the perfect asshole energy early in his career where you can see the transition where he's like smarmy and confident, but we love him for it. We love our little asshole guy like that. He's the perfect example of this. Him and Sidney Sweeney working together showed you that these two are going to move up to another level. They're going to ascend, maybe more than anybody else on this list, aside from Robbie and Chalamet. Now, those two, I think, are the only bona fide hits that in the next couple of years we're going to see their ascension. 
if Sydney Sweeney's Barbarella is very successful and her production company signs huge deals with Sony, they get a bunch of money, that's going to be great. If Powell stays away from doing the genre piece, people have joked about him as Booster Gold. I know I have too. If we keep him away from Booster Gold and let him just do these other types of movies, he's going to ascend to higher levels. We'll see. Now, Anya Taylor-Joy is another one I find to be very interesting because she is going to be leading a Furiosa movie. She has led, like, The Menu, and she was in Queen's Gambit. Like, she has shown you that she can probably reach that level, too. Is she a little too different a talent to lead those kind of things? It's hard to say, but she is committed to a specific energy, and that kind of energy is more like classic Hollywood than a lot of like these other talents. So I, I do think we're going to see her achieve some level. Like having her be the tease at the end of Dune Part 2 definitely helps her. And then having her work with Shyamalan before, having her work with Edgar Wright and Roger Eggers, she is going to be okay. But again... Eggers and Wright and Shyamalan, even George Miller. They are not directors who have bred movie stars. I guess the only example would kind of be Mel Gibson escaping the Mad Max stuff. But other than that, you don't see a lot of movie stars come out of those guys. You see success like Simon Pegg, but he's not a movie star. He's the third guy in the Mission Impossible movies. But people will pay to see People will pay to see Anya Taylor-Joy. So I think she's going to be okay if she even becomes a movie star. Personally, don't see it. And same with like someone like Miles Teller, who I, I do think like uh, he could potentially reach those heights. He's been given too many chances before. So I don't think he's going to do it. Same with somebody like Michael B. Jordan who has been given chances, but he's never reached those heights, which is a shame. So I don't know what any of those people. Now, the other one I think could reach the level of a Chalamet is Austin Butler, who just had a phenomenal run as Elvis, Fade Rothka or whatever in Dune Part 2. He is like the chaotic energy that you just see show up. He's going to try more experimental stuff with his body and his voice than some of like the other people on this. So he could be, I know I said Chalamet is like the Johnny Depp of the generation, but so is Butler in some weird way. Chalamet might become like the pretty boy, like DiCaprio as he gets older. We're like, oh yeah, he's got to stay this like angelic version of himself. But then Butler is like, I'll put on the face makeup and be a little grummy freak. And that's going to put butts in seats. If Butler got to lead some version of like a Pirates film, I'm not saying like a reboot of Pirates, but some version of that. Be very interesting to see what he could do. I, I think he could do it. Again, I don't know if he will. He might be trapped in character actor territory, but it could happen. And on that note, too, I, I think the same way about Florence Pugh. Now, Florence Pugh, she's kind of trapped in Marvel at the moment. That's really going to hinder her career. And you could say people will go out to see Thunderbolts because of her. I say Thunderbolts is not going to do that good because nobody wants to see it. But she could potentially, like, escape that. She was one of the co-leads in Oppenheimer, one of the co-characters in Dune. And you'll see Denis, Denis has casted a lot of young people that are very talented and can, like, break the mold. Timothy, Zendaya, Anya, Austin, and Florence. Like, they can all, like, escape that bubble and become, like, the next level. But are they going to? Timothy, for sure. Florence might be lost in some franchise stuff for a while, which really sucks. That's kind of what happened to Scarlett Johansson, who she's kind of taken the reins over of as the new Scarlet, or not Scarlet Witch, the uh, new Black Widow. That's kind of what's going to happen to her. The same thing that happened to people like Tom Hiddleston and Elizabeth Olsen. They kind of got trapped in there too. Now here's another one I do think could escape the bubble because there was rumors of him actually being trapped in another bubble. Aaron Taylor Johnson. Aaron Taylor Johnson could become a leading man. 
of everybody who's done a fucking Sony Spider-Man movie, he's the one that could come out like looking good. Not Leto, not Dakota Johnson. Tom Hardy is his own brand of lunacy. But Aaron Taylor Johnson, he's 33, same age as Marco Robbie, so he's still fairly young. He was rumored just the other day to be playing James Bond. Now that's been debunked, but this is a guy who has put in his bona fides. He's done a bunch of franchise stuff. He's done an Avengers movie. He's done a Christopher Nolan movie. He's been kick-ass. He's going to be in The Fall Guy. He's in Craven the Hunter. Like He could escape and become a, a modern leading man. Somebody who, I'm trying to think, like, who would be the equivalent, like, you know, a British talent that, like, struck big over here and became somebody that we all, like, look up to and we're like, this is a movie star, we love them. I don't know who it would be, but he has the potential to do that, to become one of those people. Like a Russell Crowe type of lead, maybe. I feel like he could be, like, a, a very good equivalent to, like, a Russell Crowe. Like, one of those guys where you're, like, they are very, like, full of presence. They have a specific energy about them. They kind of look like an everyman, but they're very sexy in the same way. Like, he could definitely pull that kind of a thing off, too. So, Aaron Taylor Johnson, I think he... He could also be, like, a Mel Gibson. Not, like, the politic way, but, like, look at this gruff man who has the ability to do something cool. Now, actually, I remember a conversation I had with somebody earlier when we were talking about Austin Butler. And this person said to me, I think Austin Butler could be this generation's Jack Nicholson. And I'm like, oh, that is interesting because you could see Fade Rothka being like his Joker. And then every other time you see him, he's just like, there's a specific intensity to that that works well too. And if we're going to say that Austin Butler is Jack Nicholson, I'm going to say that someone like Aaron Taylor Johnson could be like the De Niro. Interesting. This one I threw on the list just so nobody would comment on it. Tom Holland, not a movie star. He is in too many franchises for me to consider him a movie star. He has led television shows that nobody has really watched or talked about. Aside from being in the Avengers and Spider-Man movies, he has been in a couple of like streaming movies like Cherry, The Devil All the Time, The Lost City of Z that nobody has really saw. He did an Uncharted movie that nobody talks about. He's not a movie star. He's kind of like lost in a bubble of random stuff, and I don't think he's going to escape it for a while. And if he does, if he does escape it, well, that'll be interesting, won't it? But I don't think he will. So Tom, Tom I want to see succeed. I genuinely think if we put him in the right project, we could see something special come from him. But he's a he's a Sony and Disney boy, so he might just be stuck like doing stuff like that, you know? But if we gave him something like a Glenn Powell role, like if Glenn passed on like a, a specific movie, then maybe we could get Tom Holland in there to do something special. I have one more I do want to bring up just because I think she is on the track to success. But I think there's going to be too many obstacles in terms of like the culture at large that are going to keep her from achieving certain heights. The last person I want to talk about is Rachel Ziegler, who debuts in a West Side Story film directed, directed by Steven Spielberg. She immediately jumps into a franchise movie in something like the, what was it? The Shazam movie. She immediately gets Snow White after that. She gets a Hunger Games movie after that. She writes some of the songs for that Hunger Games movie. She performs in all of these movies practically, singing in most of these movies. She does a Steven Spielberg movie, a DC movie, and then reboots the Hunger Games franchise. Three movies! That's what she does. And then she's doing Snow White next year. She's got Y2K coming out this year. She's got an animated project coming out this year. Y2K, by the way, sounds insanely fun. Just like a group of kids having a party on Y2K and shit happens. That sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. I think Rachel Ziegler could easily, easily become a very successful actress. 
100%. She has picked her projects well. The stuff she is working on is fantastic. She loves movies. She is very aware of how she is perceived and portrayed. And that becomes the biggest problem where nobody is going to want to see her succeed. Too many people dislike her for some reason, like a, an audience like that. But that Hunger Games movie killed. The West Side Story bombed for reasons that weren't her. And Fear of the Gods bombed for reasons that weren't her. But she could easily sweep in here and take over a lot of these positions. I would 100% think that. I do. I do think she's going to be very successful. And Josh Andres Rivera, her partner, I love him to death. He's going to be a great character actor if he continues to work. So let's go over a few names again. People I think are movie stars and the ones I don't think will ever reach that level. Pedro Pascal. Yes, he will reach movie star if he's not one already. Margot Robbie and Timothy Chalamet are movie stars. Zendaya, I don't know if she'll get there. Sydney Sweeney, Glenn Powell, I think will get there. Anya Taylor-Joy, Austin Butler, they may never get there. Florence Pugh, Tom Holland, no. I don't think it's going to happen for either of them. Aaron Taylor-Johnson, yes, 100% yes. Rachel Ziegler, Yes, 100% she will get there. Who do I think is going to have the best career out of this bunch? That's a hard question to ask. But just from what I've seen, Rachel's been in a bunch of movies I like. Sydney Sweeney, I don't love all of her performances. But Glenn, ah. Okay, here's what I'll say. I think Chalamet will have the best career. I think Glenn Powell is the most charismatic. And I think Rachel Ziegler is the best actress. That's what I'll say there. So who are the next generation of movie stars, in my opinion? It's Margot Robbie, Timothy Chalamet, Sidney Sweeney, Glenn Powell, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Rachel Ziegler. Hopefully, we get new ones too. A whole new generation is being birthed. Walter Scoble, maybe? He's like a young Ryan Reynolds, so that fucking sucks. McKenna Grace? <laughs> you know? Maybe. Young Sheldon? <laughs> <laughs> Ian Armitage maybe <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be freaking sick actually that'd be pretty sick that'd be sick but hey that's gonna do it for this episode of the Geek Wave we talked about actors and how much fun we have with them and I appreciate everyone for tuning in and listening to that who do you think is gonna be this generation's successful actor I'm sure there's a huge list of names you could come up with but until then Thank you all for watching this episode. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.